It's Platt, and today we're getting a little salty. That's next to Platt's Beer of the Week. So the uh, particular beer we have today is Parabolita, or Parabolita, I'm not sure how they pronounce it. Uh, comes to us from the fine folks at Firestone Walker. Uh, we've tried a couple of their beers before, the Velvet Merkin and the 805. Real quick, let's jump in a little bit of their background. Uh, the brewery was founded by brother-in-laws David Walker and Adam Firestone in 1996 in Los Alamos, California. Um, Adam Firestone is the heir to the Firestone Tire Company. So he had a few more resources than the uh, average home brewer wanting to go pros. And one of those was the family vineyard. That is where the original brewery opened in 1996. The family already had a vineyard. So a lot of that zoning, a lot of that stuff was taken care of. However, they did not stay at the vineyard long. By 2001, they moved to Paso Robles, where the current headquarters are at today. Uh, it was in that early 2000 time frame that they really started gaining traction, getting some notoriety, getting some awards. In 2006, their pale ale was named Best Beer in America by Men's Journal. Around this time, they were winning medals at different beer festivals. Uh, at the Great American Beer Fest, four different times they won for Best Mid-Sized Brewery. Uh, this was a time of great growth for them. They started gaining traction, which means eventually uh, expansion, which came in 2012 when they opened something called Barrel Works. It is a separate brewery that kind of focuses on uh, wild ales, open fermentation, the Belgian sours, uh, just a facility designed specifically for that style of beer. Also probably allowed the brewer there to really focus on that style of beer. So it's kind of a cool concept to have a kind of a separate brewery for a separate style of beer. Um, eventually this kind of stuff led to more notoriety, more fame, more sales, and eventually big beer coming. And that came in 2015. Now it wasn't Bud or Coors or Miller, Carlsberg or Heineken. It was uh, Duvel Mortgart out of Belgium. They of course give us the classic Belgian ale Duvel, which I've reviewed before, you know, one of my favorite Belgian beers. And they have luckily allowed Firestone Walker to keep doing the Firestone Walker thing, really kind of pushing the envelope, uh, doing a little different things. One of those things is the utilization of something called the Burton Union Fermentation Method. It's very unique. They, what they do is they utilize a series of interconnected wooden barrels to ferment their beer. This allows for blow off or the expelling of CO2 and, and head space or foam that happens on beer. However, it doesn't create additional head space though, which can lead to oxidation of the beer. Now, I think they're the only one in the U.S. that do it on the scale they do. I think there's a couple of breweries in Great Britain that still do it, but it's not something you see very uh, often. Uh, real quick, let's get in their beers. Uh, another thing they have done in the last few years is they've opened something called, I believe it's called the Velvet Propagator, and it's a brewery specializing in West Coast IPAs and just IPAs in general. And uh, that takes us to our first beer to talk about, Mind Haze. Uh, Brain Melter, great name for a beer, 8.5% ABV. This is a hazy Imperial IPA. And from what I gather, one of the first recipes they perfected at the Propagator Brewery, which is kind of a cool story. Next is Cinnamon Dolce Nitro Stout, comes in at 6% ABV. This is more kind of traditional, what we think of a Firestone Walker. This is made with Madagascar vanilla and cinnamon sticks. And you add that to a nitro, that creamy mouthfeel. I bet this is great around the holidays for sure. And lastly, something definitely uh, right in the strike zone for Firestone Walker. Between two grams, 11.5% ABV. This is a s'mores-inspired stout that then gets aged in Heaven Hill bourbon barrels. Just sounds like a flavor explosion in your mouth. Again, I love barrel-aged beers. I love big stouts. This just sounds absolutely terrific. Well, before we try this particular beer though, let's check out the stats. So before we try this particular beer, it's time for uh, questions for Platt. If you have a question that you'd like me to answer in a video, please send it to platt'sboozeblog at gmail.com in the subject line put questions for Platt. Today's question comes from Jeremiah, and this is in lieu of a home brewing video, but this works for beer, wine, mead, cider, what any kind of fermentation. Do I have to mix the yeast? That was Jeremiah's question. The answer is you do not have to. If you do, it's all right, it's not the end of the world, but you don't have to. Here's a good way to look at it. 
if I'm fermenting like even just easy homemade wine that may ferment for a week or two or a standard ale may go a month, lagers, wines may go a couple of months or even longer, mead, same thing. All you're doing when you mix the yeast is you just hydrate that yeast a little faster. You may be saving two hours, but if you're going to ferment it out for a couple of months, the two hours don't matter. Uh, again, if you mix it, you're fine, but you don't need to. That's the only thing when you mix it is you do hydrate the yeast a little faster, which then wakes it up just a little faster, but we're talking about a couple hours, so no big deal. Real quick, let's jump in this beer. Uh, really unique, kind of a cool concept behind the beer. Uh, they have had their uh, Parabola line out for a while, which basically, I believe it's an imperial stout that gets barrel aged in bourbon barrels for a year, which that right there just sounds great. This particular one, though, they took that base formula, but they kind of tweaked it. They end up blending in some Velvet Merkin, which is a milk stout, and then they added salted uh, sea salt, which kind of gives the salted caramel flavor. There's actually no salted caramel harmed in the making of this beer, but the, the flavor profile with that sea salt added gets to those notes of salted uh, caramel, and then it is uh, aged, of course, a year in a bourbon barrel. So I'm really looking forward to this. Sounds like just a ton of flavor in this beer. Oh, that just pours dark. Oh yeah, we got, even though we only did half pour, a good finger plus width, a really dark khaki, you know, brown head. Oh man, I pick up those dark, dark malt notes. You even get uh, almost some of the dark fruit notes that you get in some of these barrel-aged beers. Yeah, this this smells like just a really big, dark, malty loveliness. Let's jump on in. I'm not getting the caramel. Um, I'm not even necessarily picking up salt. I just get a lot of dark notes. I get a lot of chocolate, a little bit of espresso, plenty of body. Uh, that head is staying nice and firm. Yeah, I'm not picking <laughs> up the um, sea salt, you know, any kind of caramel vibe. This is just a nice, Good dark drinking beer. Um, I do pick up. I do pick up some barrel notes. I'm not going to say it's caramel. You know, that's a kind of a, a popular you know caramel toffee. You kind of get those off bourbon barrel sometimes. I'm getting it a little, but I I just don't see where the caramel comes out. Now, you know, is it caramel? Is it toffee? You know what? I just, that caramel's not sticking out enough. The salt's not sticking out enough. That being said, this is absolutely delicious. It's a good beer. Um, just the fact that they literally, you know, tag salted caramel on there, I think can lead to some disappointment. But if you just like big, malty, dark, winter warmer style beers. Yeah, this one is, uh, this is a good choice. Well, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please subscribe down below. Also, please like the video because it lets YouTube know we're putting out good content. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or beers that you'd like me to try, please leave them in the comment section, or you can always contact me on the Twitter page. Well, until next time, bottoms up.